pledging American action in an open and free Indo-Pacific. Now, these strong words were delivered on her second of seven days in of her trip in Singapore and Vietnam, as she hopes to shore up support for the administration's agenda in dealing with Chinese security and economic influence. We're going to break down the vice president's trip and what the administration hopes they can accomplish. This is China's envoy to the UN, says the US Army and their coalition partners should be held accountable for allegedly violating rights in Afghanistan. This is the CIA director now we know has met with the leader of the Taliban in Afghanistan in what was supposed to be a secret meeting, raising lots of questions. Well, our expert is going to join us, hoping to give us the answers. And a California man was arrested in possession of narcotics, loaded handguns, and hundreds of election ballots. Hmm. We're going to bring you the story plus the 360 view on exactly how the California recall election for Governor Newsom is progressing. I'm Scotty Nell Hughes, and all of these stories on today's edition of News Views Hughes, right here on RT America. Let's get started. Well, following the debacle of the U.S. troop withdrawal in Afghanistan, the U.S. is in full damage control mode. Now, world leaders are wondering whether or not the U.S. is trustworthy or still the superpower of the past. The White House's answer to those questions? Well, it's Vice President Kamala Harris, who is currently on a seven-day trip through Asia with a goal of shifting the heat on China in regards to security and control of the South China Sea. In the South China Sea, we know that Beijing continues to coerce, to intimidate, and to make claims to the vast majority of the South China Sea. And Beijing's actions continue to undermine the rules-based order and threaten the sovereignty of nations. Yeah, this, as she discussed with Singapore leaders, holiday gift shopping and climate change. But guess what she left out of the conversation? focusing on the events in Afghanistan on her speech in Singapore. The, the, the stories that we are now hearing about um, the caution that if you want to have Christmas toys for your children, it might now be, might be the time to start buying them because the delay may be many, many months. <laughs> well, to add to this, China is now appealing to the UN, saying the US and her allies committed rights violations in Afghanistan and therefore should be punished. So it seems like while Harris is going around trying to take little jabs at China, <laughs> China went straight for the jugular and took it to the top governing body of the world. So I don't know if this is more odd than awkward, but I know a man who will. Steve Gill, former U.S. Trade Representative official, joins us now. Steve. Hey, Scotty. I just had to bring you in and ask you, what do you think of this timing? And the motivation for the vice president's trip to Vietnam and Singapore, does it fall in line with what's going on, do you think, in Afghanistan? Well, I think it was a pre-scheduled trip, but sometimes world events take over and you should, you know, change the schedule. I think the optics of her being in Vietnam while we're seeing sort of a deja vu all over again, Vietnam withdrawal moment in Afghanistan is just the kind of optics that, that somebody in the White House ought to be fired for. Well, and that's the comment. It's like of all the time, if anything, if you are going over into this region, why would you not make this more of a focus of your trip? And yet very little is being said which kind of goes along with what's happening here in the U.S. in regards to Afghanistan, besides just positive points. But in reality, we always have this conversation with any administration. What can a vice president actually accomplish? And does Harris think that the countries she's visiting are just going to say, hey, you know what, I'm going to drop all ties of leadership to China, and I'm going to follow the United States because of your leadership? Well, I don't think anybody watching world events uh, during the Biden administration's public policy failures is thinking that our allies and our adversaries are, are going to be anything other than scared and emboldened uh, on, on those two fronts. Uh, you know, and then for her to bring up this Christmas shopping spree, uh, I guess it is appropriate because we've just gifted uh, the Taliban $83 billion worth of armament, weapons, and, and aircraft. So it's been Christmas in Kabul, so I guess that's why it's on her mind. 
And then for her to also bring up climate change as an issue that might delay Christmas presents, I guess, again, the Taliban and the Biden administration are in complete lockstep because the Taliban announced today that, that they're going to be doing what they can to fight against global climate change. So, again, whether it's uh, giving them free weapons for Christmas or whether it's uh, enlisting their support to stop the uh, rising tides that may prevent Christmas in America, it, it seems like this is an administration that is off point on every single issue. And Steve, I mean, you have to think, when you're talking about a terrorist group actually talking about something like climate change, like they're a legitimate government, like other countries are supposed to be worried about, you have to wonder what is going on here. And you have to wonder, considering there's still chaos in the streets of Afghanistan, that the Taliban would even think to even bring this up. Seems a little bit, what's the word, um, oxymoronic is kind of comes to mind. But then you also <laughs> I like have... the moronic part. Uh, yeah, well, uh, but, that's... But keep good. in mind, they are, they are absolutely on a PR offensive. Uh, to make it look like they're the kinder, sweeter, gentler, you know, Taliban 2.0. And yet the stories we're already getting from, from Afghanistan of the torture, the brutality directed at women, directing at those who have helped the U.S. And now we've got this hard deadline that, that we're going ahead and pulling our troops out while the Taliban is saying, you know, there is no safe spot for Americans or Afghanis who are trying to leave here while President Obama speeds up the process of removing whatever forces we have there that could help guarantee some sort of a simple exit. Well, and that's what brings us back into China on this, because China has come, gone to the UN and say, hey, guess what? The US and all their allies, they've done wrong in Afghanistan. They need to be punished. I'm kind of wondering why China would take this to the UN, kind of drawing this line in the sand, saying, guess what? Your country, you need to decide between China or the United States. Who are you going to stand with? Meanwhile, Kamala Harris today in Singapore was saying, we're not going to make you decide, Asia. Do you think Kamala knows that where these countries in Asia would actually choose to stand with in the present? You know, anybody watching world events right now that's an ally has to be concerned about whether this, this alliance is is as strong as it pretends to be or has been under previous administrations. I mean, we saw basically the Chinese, you know, show their muscle in Hong Kong. They're continuing to threaten Taiwan. You know, if you're a Taiwanese uh, uh, resident or a Taiwanese business, you got to be terrified that, uh, that the Chinese seem to be looking at what's going on in Afghanistan and other parts of the world, figuring we can take Taiwan and the Biden administration won't lift a finger to help them. Our allies and our adversaries, again, are watching very closely what's happening in Afghanistan. And sadly, for America's future, the lessons that both are learning is not good for us. Well, and we've looked at Kamala Harris. And in the last seven months, you've kind of seen her on the back burner. She was given in charge of the border. We know how that goes. Is the crisis still happening? And they send her on this trip today. Some people suggest that they're trying to beef up Kamala Harris's foreign policy resume and see how well she handles it. Is this trip actually helping or hurting her in regards to how she has diplomat how she handles diplomatic relations with countries that are both adversarial as well as our friends? Not when she talks nonsense about Christmas shopping and global warming and ignoring the, the global crisis that is going on in Afghanistan. I think if anything, it underlines that she is not ready for prime time. But then is anybody in this administration really ready for prime time and the challenges that we're confronting? You know, the bottom line is that she's a little bit like Hillary Clinton in that her poll numbers do better when she's invisible than when she's visible. So part of the idea may have been to get her out of town so she didn't have to comment and maybe make missteps about Afghanistan. Uh, but I don't know that that's helpful when she's making you know, silly, ridiculous comments about Christmas shopping when, uh, when the world is aflame. Well, we, Steve, we talked about what, what is being talked about by Kamala Harris, the Christmas shopping, what's not Afghanistan. But one more thing that was not talked about that I find very curious. Today, the U.S. review of COVID origins. It ends today. You're getting very little press about that. The research supposed that the U.S. was doing to figure out where exactly this virus came from and the source. It comes out today, but do you think the vice president is even bringing up this topic? Obviously, Vietnam's been hit by it. Obviously, Singapore's had their own issues as well. But yet, we're not hearing this mentioned. Why not? We know where it came from. It came from Wuhan. It came from China. It is clearly a weaponized virus, or it wouldn't have the kind of ongoing capabilities that it's shown. And yet, again, this is an administration that can't directly confront China any more than they can directly confront you know, Iran, Russia, or anybody else in the world, because they don't have the strength of character, the strength of, of uh, uh, conviction to actually go toe-to-toe -to -toe with our adversaries in the world. So they can talk tough like Kamala Harris has done a little bit in, uh, uh, in Singapore and Vietnam, but actions speak louder than words. And I think the world's looking at the actions in Afghanistan 
and sadly knowing that this administration's words don't mean anything, including not being willing to confront China on what the whole world knows. This came from China, and yet they've paid no price in it. Well, I just have to say, I think it's idiotic if you think if the United States and this administration is not willing to stand up to the Taliban, if they're going to be not willing to stand, if they're going to be willing to stand up to China. I mean, it's like asking David or Goliath, which one do you think they're scared of? And if they're scared of David, I can tell you they don't want to take on Goliath. Steve, always great talking with you. Thanks, Scotty.